Views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show Lady Boss knows what women want. To be free to speak their voice. To live in financial freedom and build businesses that radiate wealth, leaving legacies we can be proud of. Every Friday, we bring you Lady Boss entrepreneurs that are changing the world. Joan Sharp, changing the conversation from money to vision. See you Friday. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. This topic that we're going to talk about today is right up our alley because we are looking at making sure that our vision and our values are aligned with your money with my beautiful co-host, Joan Sharp. Joan prepares us for these questions, these profound questions, and she's asking us, are you, your vision, and your values aligned with your money? Changing the conversation from money to vision. That's what we're going to talk about today. Do you talk about your vision and values and then spend money and time on things that do not align with your direction? We're going to talk about how to align your vision with values with your financial life and time. Do you say and believe one thing and then set up your resources and time in a different way? That's really, really important. Do you say and do one thing and then take different actions? Let me introduce you to my beautiful co-host, Joan Sharp of River Family Advisors. Joan is not just an advisor. She's a thought leader in the area of changing your money mindset. Joan encourages us to change the difficult conversations that we have that are all about money to a pleasant conversation about a shared vision, and you will better support your values life experience, legacy, and wealth. Welcome to the show, Joan. Hey, Cornelia. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me today. It's great to see you. And um, and this is a perfect time of year. We're in January, the end of January, and people are either just starting New Year's resolutions or they're in the process of breaking them. And I think this happens because it doesn't fit into their vision. Yes, yes, it doesn't fit into their vision because they haven't really articulated their vision. And so what are you saying, Joan, that vision is not part of New Year's resolution? I don't know about you, but I find that most people (laughs) think a New Year's resolution, I, I, I think New Year's resolutions are based on what they think they should look like or should do based on outside influences. You know, one of the greatest ones is I'm going to lose 30 pounds. And you may have a vision of being slimmer, but what is that about? What is the expectation that you're setting for yourself? And how does that fit with the rest of your life? Or not going to Starbucks because you want to save money, right? For, um, the year you want to increase your savings and increasing your savings and maybe not spending so much time at Starbucks, but how does that, why do you go to Starbucks? Did you ask yourself that? What was important about that? And what is important about saving the money other than you heard someone tell you that? Yeah, I think it's important to have, to make those things really clear about what your vision is. Like for instance, I'm looking at my vision being at the end of 2021. My vision is that this will be my million dollar year. Okay. And so throughout the year now, I have (laughs) looked at all of the things that I can do to make sure that I'm set up to achieve that, including um, cutting out things that no longer, that, that don't need to be part of that vision. Meaning they don't produce the income or they don't move you further to where you want to go. So I, you know, and and I say this because why it, and it would have meant, why is a million dollar a year the, you know, the target? I mean, I'm just saying, why is it a dollar? Could it be 
that you want to expand your reach to so much, which would happen to equal that amount of. of Yes, that's, that's perfect because I know what that vision is. Yeah inspiring a million people into peace and gratitude with with one of my courses so yeah. and that generates that so right. yes, i'm absolutely there with you on that yeah and i say that because that's what a lot of people think it's just about the dollars and they visualize the dollars and it but the dollars isn't who we are and that's not how we show up every day right There's something deeper there that moves you to stay on task for why you want to do it. It's the same with if losing 30 pounds is unreasonable, why, you know, why are you losing 30 pounds? You know, is it because you want to be healthy? You want to breathe better? Um, Yes, it, it could be you want to buy a dress, but why is that particular dress? It's interesting. I don't know about you, but... Whenever women seem to get married, they lose a lot of weight because the vision is the dress. Almost most women I know, you know, and it isn't about the weight. It's about the dress and the presentation and the whole picture on that day, right? And so that's why, what if you had really worked with your vision and great if it was to lose weight or, or save money, right? Um, but that has to be tied to something that's important to you and an expectation. So as you're thinking of breaking that at the end of the year, at the end of January, the 1st of February, you can say, wait a minute, I am doing this because I want to fit in this dress or this is, you know, um, for this event and, be it a high school reunion or a wedding, this is I, I, or I want to be able to breathe better or go up and down 10 flights of steps. And in order to do that, I have to lose this weight or I'm going to stop going to Starbucks because it's mindless. I'm not talking to anyone and I'm spending $5 and I have a great coffee machine at home or, you know, I'm not, I'm going to continue to go to Starbucks, but I'm going to go three times a week when I know the people I want to see are there. And that's why I go. So there has to be more of an ulterior motive and, and reasoning. And that's why instead of just this thing out there that I'm going to do because everyone says I should do it with that. So this is where I'm going to say it's important to really it's not about a resolution, right? It's a lifestyle change. Yeah, and I think that's the important piece is when you make a resolution, haven't you decided that it's important to you? And how does this tie into leaving a daily legacy? Because it's not about the resolution. It's about making that lifestyle change, right? And that's what Yes. You're- yeah, and so then why do you want to make the lifestyle change? Because... Part of your vision, and once again, I'm going to remind you, a vision can be this weekend, it can be for the year, it can be this month. Is it because you want to show up differently and have people think and see you um, as what is really important to you? So most people think they need to wait till they retire to show up as what's important. There are people who don't make it to retirement. And if you've been to a funeral of a young person, it's how they live their life every day and what they did that is brought up. So is this, this is why I say that, so what is you, your vision is to hit, have a million people be impacted, right? This year, right? So what, what is the vision? So then People, a million people could show up and say, Cornelia impacted my life this year. That's invaluable, right? So what is it that you want in your values too? What's so important to you that you want to show and share? Share and show with your kids. We, I think we've pretty much learned as we have grown up, people don't learn or change by what you tell them. It's how you act and what you do. 
Yeah. It's the modeling. It's the modeling. It's being, it's walking the talk and being the example, being the example, like practicing what you're preaching. Yes. Yes, exactly. It is. It it is. And I am going to dive into the charitable side on this because it's an easy place to use that example. Many of us may give time or money to an organization because a friend has asked us to, but we are not able to contribute as much or have time in a place that actually reflects us. So I'm just going to say for me, one of the places would be um, that I, I always find important is the YWCA. That's YW because it's about eliminating racism and empowering women. Now I am, I have been very involved in that. And I am very proud and I still do some stuff with it, but I always donate because it resonates with who I am. So that when people think of me and if they think of the YWCA, there's alignment. I am here because I am empowering individuals, right? To have a conversation about their vision and to be themselves, okay? I think the, you know, uh, any of the cancer uh Fundraisers are very important, so many different types of cancers, right? But for me to spend time there or to give money wouldn't represent me. And it's not that I don't think it's important. And I say this because I had a little bout with cancer. So it's not that I don't think it's important, but it isn't who I am. My cancer isn't who I am. And so I want people to remember who I am. So this is where charitable is kind of where we find if you can, if you're having a hard time diving in, maybe I find kind of weighing those out. And obviously I think cancer organizations are really important, but it's not going to, they're not defining me. I would rather um, the eliminating racism and empowering women um, be more of a definition on how I show up. So that is really setting a vision. So how I walk and work with individuals every day, and I don't mean just at work. I mean, how I show up and listen every day is the vision. And I'll tell you, uh, quite a few years ago, my vision was to go on a silent retreat and to figure out, and it was, it I'm, I'm going to say it wasn't even to go on a silent retreat. It was to figure out how to start meditating more. Okay. And then a silent retreat walked into my life. And it was interesting. We had done this um, in teams, some of us saying something. And um, what was really important to us to accomplish that year and why was it important? So it had to be deep. And the person I worked with was like, oh my gosh, you went to a silent retreat? You really got what you were looking for in that. And in those things, present yourself. And if you're focused on this is where I want to be and how I want to show up, those things come to you and then you have your resources available, right? For that versus, oh, the world says I should do this or I have to be this way. Breathe deep. What is your vision for how you want to show up and what's really important to you, and then figure out what is your lifestyle change or focus going to be versus a goal or a resolution. Now, there's checkpoints. As you mentioned, Cornelia, you're going to have checkpoints, and I am calling them checkpoints as part of the process, not goals, because I feel that goals as New Year's resolutions have taken over our vision. And our vision is much deeper because then we can touch in, if it's not working, what are our values and why is this important? Yeah, and I love that. You know, like everything that you talked about from weight loss to what's the vision for, what's the vision for your values, what's the vision for your legacy, and these are all, what's the vision for your giving? It's, these are all the things that is it all aligned with your, with your values? And that's why it's important to know what your values are. And what you stand for and you know that when you were talking about the wedding dress and uh you know it's like 
okay, yeah, we want to look good for the wedding, but what are you going to do after the wedding, right? It's about it's about that, and will you maintain that that beautiful look uh, in that legacy after the wedding? So that's always been an issue, right? And so, again, that brings it back to the vision of what is the vision for the relationship, for your legacy, for your marriage? What is the vision for? Is your is your money aligned with your vision? Is, is, your, is your spending aligned with your vision? Is yeah. your saving aligned with your vision? Is, are your resources aligned with your vision? This is what you do every time when you have us do this uh, segment, Joan, you, you bring us back to the conversation of what is the vision? And like you so well put today, that my vision is to impact a million people. And I have a system in place to do that. And so that's exactly what it's going to do and what it's going to, you know, how it's going to impact people, how it's going to support people. So, Joan, you developed a, a, a system also called Siri. And um, how does Siri, how does Siri impact and how does that, how would that serve someone with aligning their vision with their money well it's um thank you for asking it's a process that i've come up with on how to bottle this to get the word kind of goals out of the way and to start working with this and the first part the siri it's c e r i is an acronym and the c is communication and it's about learning how each other and the people you're talking with communicate because I communicate very differently than my father and I he likes bullet points and he wants it written and I speak and I want to hear a story so it's understanding the communication of the people you're talking to and with and then envision envision is the visioning part both of you yourself what is it you're trying to accomplish? What is the vision? Where, what are the expectations and the values around this? And why is this important? And then, and that's the E for in, uh, in Siri. And then R is resources. Look at your resources tied to the vision. I find so many times when we talk vision and then we talk money, we go and the, and the money has the goals like retirement or education, whatever. And, and they're like different buckets and they're different conversations, but they need to be blended. So it's then looking and it's looking at it close and far away. And that's the resources and then implementation. And as implementation is so important because that is also the continual reflection of who you are. I had someone tell me they, they're, a, they're a business coach and they are super organized and on it um, and actually business marketing. And she said, oh my gosh, I have my estate documents all done. My powers of attorney for medical health, my will, my trust. She said, because I would not want to be in an accident or die and not have that organized because that doesn't align with who I am. Wow. Yeah. And that is where we are, right? We are not aligned. How many people have their estate documents done? And then you may have them done, but the person who is supposed to execute needs to understand what is important to you and how are you, what is your vision has been in life so they can execute it while they are filling in for you to help do the financial. And I find the durable financial power is more about helping to guide the life and where you're going to be while you're unable to do it. And what does that look like? And do you have your net worth in all your accounts written out so the person can work with it? There's a lot to this and it reflects if it's all a mess and unorganized, does that counter for who you were and how you show up? How can people contact you, Joan Sharp? It is River, R-I-V-E-R, Family Advisors, A-D-V-I-S-O-R-S dot com and, um, is the website. And you, I'm open for individual coaching um, just to help guide you on keeping the vision and aligning everything. Uh, it's every other month for a year or also personal advising, which is really looking at everything and digging deep. Awesome. 
Thank you so much, Joan, for today's show. Thank you, everybody, for listening and tuning in. And we'll see you again next time when we're changing the conversation from money to vision. See you next time. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Lady Boss, Women Inspiring Women, featuring leading edge entrepreneurs who are putting the focus on empathic leadership in today's modern day world. Text the word Cornelia to the number 22828 and receive her weekly newsletters. For more information on Cornelia Stephanie and her extraordinary work or to listen to past shows, go to CorneliaStephanie.com.